Hello, and welcome to this e-tutorial on how to complete the DD Form 137-7, or Dependency Statement, Ward of Court form. The DD Form 137-7 determines the relationship and dependency of the claim dependents and the member's entitlement to authorized benefits on behalf of a ward of a court. The 16 sections of the form must be completed. Remember to report income in gross amounts. If any question does not apply to your situation, please write NA in that block. Forms with incomplete answers or unfilled boxes cannot be processed. Before you fill out the form, please read the instructions and notes provided in the instructions box. Please note, the service member must complete the entire form, including the date and their notarized signature. The terms member and sponsor are used interchangeably on the form, this e-tutorial uses the term member. Verification of income, proof of support, and a copy of guardianship documents are required. In the case of a ward who is a full-time student, supporting documentation must include a letter from the accredited college or university verifying the ward's full-time enrollment, documentation of expenses, and any educational assistance the ward receives. If the ward is incapacitated and over the age of 21, a medical sufficiency statement from a military medical treatment facility is required. In Block 1A, please place an X on each entitlement you are requesting. For our purposes, BAH is Basic Allowance for Housing, and a USIP card is Uniform Services Identification and Privilege Card, or ID card. The Secondary Dependency Office of your branch or service will verify your eligibility for the requested entitlements as set forth by Congress. Next, answer Block 1B. If this is your first application for secondary dependency for this dependent, mark Yes. If this is not your first application, please mark No and provide the date of your last application. In Block 1C, indicate whether your previous claim was approved or disapproved. Block 2, Member Information, asks for the member's name, social security number, current or final rank held, and status or component. Block 2E asks for the member's current residence address, and 2F asks for the complete military unit address if the member is on active duty. If the member is now retired, please write NA. Please provide current information in Block 2. The Secondary Dependency Office uses the information in these boxes to communicate with the member when more evidence or clarification is needed to complete the claim. Please provide good working telephone numbers an email address if applicable, and the member's marital status. Block 3, Ward Information, requests information for the claimed ward. This section is only for the child that is being claimed. Block 4, Child's Residence, asks you to describe the ward's residence. In Block 4A, select the type and owner status of the residence where the child lives. In Block 4B, be sure to enter the actual name and address of the owner or managing company, if rented, of the residence, whether it's subsidized housing, and the date the child started living there. Forms are commonly rejected for incomplete information in Block 4. Section 5. If Ward is a full-time student, requests current information regarding the child's residence. In Blocks 5 A and B, provide the student's address while at school and the type of residence. In Blocks 5 C and D, provide the address and type of residence where the student lives, in excess of 90 days while not at school. In Block 6, Persons Living in Household with Child, please list all persons who live in the household with the child, including the claimed child. If the person is employed, show average number of hours worked per week. This section cannot be blank, even if the claimed child and the parent are the only people in the household. Remember, please use NA for fields with no information. Block 7, Household Expenses, may be confusing. Errors in this block often cause form rejections. In this block, list all expenses for all persons living in the home, not just the claim dependent's share for the past 12 months. If the child lives in the residence with the member, or a home owned by the member, use fair rental value for the entire dwelling. If child does not reside in member's household or in a dwelling owned by the member, list actual mortgage, rent, or fair rental value if dwelling is mortgage-free. If fair rental value, 
The amount an owner could reasonably expect to receive from a stranger to rent the dwelling is used. Please provide an explanation as to how the FRV was determined in the remarks, Block 14. DFAS requires the full amount of each expense to be listed for accuracy. For detailed information regarding what type of expense can be claimed in each box of the section, please refer to our webpage, www.dfas.mil backslash military members backslash pay and entitlements backslash secondary dependency. In Block 8, Ward's Personal Expenses, note all expenses of the claimed child regardless of who pays for them. These amounts should not include personal items for the member, only the dependents being claimed. For additional information on what should be included, please see the Expenses Breakdown Worksheet by clicking on the link for the Members Branch of Service at www.dfast.mil backslash military members backslash secondary dependency backslash SDC. Block 9, Ward School Expenses. Please list all of the Ward School Expenses, even if covered by scholarship, grant, or other financial aid. These amounts must be entered based on a monthly basis, not quarterly or yearly. Block 10, Incapacitated Ward, is only applicable if the claimed ward lives in a hospital, assisted living facility, or institution. If the child resides in a facility full-time, mark N-A on Block 7. If the child resides at the facility part-time and in another location part-time, for example, member's residence, then Sections 7 and 10 must be filled out. The Army requires an official letter from the institution or facility explaining and itemizing the child's costs for residing there and who pays for those expenses, for example, a soldier, the government, etc. Block 11, Ward's Employment. Is the claimed child currently employed or have they been employed during the past 12 months? Please complete the employment information asked in this section. If the child did not hold a job during the past 12 months, please mark no in the checkbox. Block 12, Ward School Attendance. Please check the appropriate yes or no box. If the child has attended school, please include the school name and address, whether it was a vocational or degree-seeking program, dates attended, full or part-time status, and major if appropriate. A verification of enrollment at an institution of higher learning is required. Verification must be on official school letterhead and include the school's name and address, the student's status, full or part-time, the projected graduation date, and the school's official stamp. In Block 13, Ward's Income lists all gross income received by the child only, whether taxable or non-taxable, and whether received monthly, quarterly, or yearly. This includes any income you receive as custodian or administrator for the child. If any income received during the past 12 months was a lump sum or one-time payment, be sure to state this. Remember, do not list member income on the child income section or an incorrect or negative determination may be made based on the information submitted. Block 14, Members' Contribution, asks for the members' contributions directly related to the claimed child over the past 12 months. Recertification requests require the full 12 months to be filled in. First requests only require the current month's contribution. For service members requesting BAH on behalf of the child, the Joint Federal Travel Regulation, JFTR, Chapter 10, which regulates BAH, requires proof of support to the claimed child. Without proof of support, we must reject your claim. Acceptable forms of proof of support include AD, discretionary allotment on the LES, canceled checks, money order receipts, and Western Union transfers made out to the claim dependent or claim dependent's custodian. Joint checking accounts, cash contributions, or purchase receipts are not acceptable forms of proof of support. Copies of bills paid on behalf of the dependent may also be used as long as proof of payment can be provided. Block 15 Remarks. Please use this section to add additional information for any of the sections on this form. Please annotate which response you are adding information for at the beginning of each entry. On Section 16 Signatures, 
please make sure all signatures are signed and dated in the presence of a notary public. All forms with notary blocks must be notarized. Failure to have the documents notarized will result in return of the application without action. The custodian signature relates to the signature of the person who has physical custody of the child, whether that is the member or another person. As explained in the beginning of this e-tutorial, the member must sign and date the DD Form 137-7 on Section 16C unless the member is not available due to the necessity of military service when the forms were completed. In this case, a copy of a general or financial power of attorney is required. Thank you for watching this e-tutorial on how to complete the DD Form 137-7 Dependency Statement Ward of a Court. Additional resources, information, and links to forms are available online at www.dfas.mil backslash military members backslash secondary dependency backslash sdc.html.